Hello everybody, it's Philly Cots with the Hump Day Hall, number 48. We're at one month away, and it makes it a full year that I've been doing the comic book haul. You know, every week, where I get together with my stack of comics, and we talk about them. And man, I'm about to go on vacation. About to go up to Maine, the Portland area, and up and down the coast. And about, I'm really looking forward to going to Coast City Comics again in Portland, Maine. I was there last year. They have a great, great shop up there. Great merchandise, great books, obviously. Great t-shirts. One-of-a-kind stuff up there. And uh, before I got to go on vacation, man, I got to get a lot of stuff done at work. There's certain things that I need to get done before I can go. And it kind of puts an extra workload on me before I get to go on vacation. And then, of course, when I get back, I'm going to be swamped with work, too. But what has to get done has to get done. Important thing is I made it to the comic book shop today. I made it 10 minutes before close and I had to rush through. I already knew what I was going to get. I utilized fresh comics on my phone. And I was able to run in and out of there and get my stuff, man. And I needed it. So without further ado, let's get started. IDW six issue series. Crossover City, Star Trek, Green Lantern, The Spectrum War. And I'm sorry because I'm limited on time. I have to use my webcam for this. I apologize. Perhaps next week. Well, next week I won't be able to do a haul. I'm going to have to do a haul by phone and hope that the hotel where I'm staying has free Wi Fi and I can upload it. All right? So for the next couple of weeks, we got to suffer with quality. All right, man? Give me a break. Anyway. Sinestro, Klingon Proverb, Fear is Power. Uh, the Yellow Ring of Fear went to Captain Chang of the Klingons. How appropriate. I can't wait to see what happens. Uh, the first issue was pretty much, you know, set-up issue. Primarily went along the lines of a typical Star Trek story. You know, they go down on a planet find something. This time they found the corpse of Ganthet and some rings, all the rings of the spectrum. And what's interesting is you find out who gets what rings. I'm going to read it here. There's a couple that have been unaccounted for. The orange ring and the red ring, we don't know who has yet. We do find out in this issue who gets the orange ring. Spoiler alert, but I'm not going to tell you who. But we have Pavlov Chekhov, Blue Lantern Corps, Dr. Bones McCoy of the Indigo Tribe, Lieutenant Ohura of the Star Sapphires, and General Chang, as I mentioned, of the Sinestro Corps, and of course Green Lantern is Green Lantern with the Green Ring. Really looking forward to seeing how this goes down. We got a little bit of Romulan action in here. We got a little bit of an appearance from the P -P Parallax. And we have, of course, the surprise which the cover already told it. Mr. Sinestro, I can't wait to see what happens when he has a bunch of Klingons at his side and now in the fear Sinestro core, baby. So I'm really looking forward to it. Check it out. I'm enjoying it. Batman number 43. That is a new villain, folks. Mr. Bloom. Uh, they don't really get into him too much in this, really. Uh, it's more a lot of emotional sequences between characters in this. Most notably, in the beginning, we have Bruce Wayne and Commissioner Gordon, who is now, you know, the Mecha Bat. Uh, they are both in civilian attire. Middle life crisis Batman. Mr. Gordon with a mohawk, shaved off his mustache. In a Mech Bat suit, kind of like a middle-aged man getting a uh, sports car or something. You know, that's what I keep thinking. It's like... Midlife crisis, Batman. And Bruce Wayne, of all things, has become a social worker, it seems. He works at a community center, and he's helping people. And in the start of this issue, him and Gordon have a conversation, and it's kind of like you get a taste of how the power dynamic has shifted. You know, Gordon's kind of like the muscle now is this mecha bat. And it's kind of interesting to see how that conversation goes. Later on in the issue, we have Superman who we all know has been outed as Clark Kent 
His secret identity has been revealed. He has a very heartwarming conversation with Alfred. And as we all know, Alfred is kind of like the father figure for Bruce Wayne. And it really solidifies that when we look at that here. Uh, we got some great, great artwork by Capullo. I mean, check out this spread. That's uh, Commissioner Gordon when he isn't in the mech suit. I do kind of like that Batman suit for real. Um, but kind of gives you some a lot of backstory. You also find out in the conversation between Superman and Alfred how Batman survived at Endgame. And it raises the questions for me is, what, did Joker survive? What's going on? I mean, of course we know Joker survived, but how? And it also kind of explains in a little bit more detail why Batman doesn't want to take up the mantle of Batman again. So, pretty cool. Seems like this story is kind of a bit of a slow burn. I'm still very surprised at how quick they brought back Bruce Wayne. I mean, by the end of last issue, we already saw on the last page that Bruce Wayne was working at some community center, and he's gone all social worker, of all things, on us, you know. A social worker. Jesus Christ. All right. Catwoman number 43. I wanted to get the bombshell cover of this, you know, the bombshells of the month, the DC variant covers, because the one for Catwoman was beautiful. But the, the all every issue at my shop was, like, completely mangled. It had, like, crevices the size of the Grand Canyon it, on the binding, you know. And I'm not all Mr., you know, like a lot of my Italian friends. I'm not saying all of them, but I had a couple Italian friends in Albany, New York, who had uh, family members who were straight off the boat from Italy. And they had a situation. Now, let me know if this is, if you have any Italian friends that are like this, that the living room upstairs and the kitchen was like never touched, and the furniture was in plastic. I'll never forget it. We weren't allowed to go upstairs when I went to my friend's house. Both of these guys. And the kitchen was never used. And down in the basement, they had another kitchen and, like, another living room area, play area. And that was where we all hung out. And upstairs was, like, for special company. And, and they had special sets of china. And, and it was just funny. I always thought that was funny. And that's how I feel everyone is today with collecting. You know, you put it in the bag and the backboard and that's what you do as soon as you get it well I, you know i don't mind having a lived in approach with my comics but i want to be the one that's living in it you know what i'm saying i don't want to buy it at the rack and it's already mangled you know what i mean it's kind of like if you got a brother and you can make fun of your brother but no one else can i don't know it's kind of like one of those weird things maybe i'm i'm kind of kooky about that but this issue is kind of anticlimactic because if you read, you know, Batman already or if you read like Batman, Superman or Detective Comics, but especially if you read Batman, you already know that Batman is still alive and he's a social worker. That's already been revealed. And part of the, you know, excitement in this issue is that Selina Kyle, a.k.a. Catwoman, is supposed to be going out and finding out what happened to Batman. But like I said, it's very anticlimactic if, you know, you read Batman already, you kind of, you've already known. You already knew by the end of the last issue that he's still around, still alive. Um, but you do get a little bit more of Bruce Wayne in here. And if you look, that's where he's a social worker at. The Fox Center for Gotham Youth. And I shouldn't say he's a social worker. He's a volunteer because to become a social worker, you know, you got to get a master's degree and everything and go to school. And I don't think Bruce Wayne has uh, done that so very quickly, right? So he's volunteering at a Gotham, you know, youth center. Has a nice conversation, touching conversation with Selena Kyle. There's some other stories going on in here. You have uh, Iko, who is from the... Uh, Japanese crime syndicate, she's the other cat woman, you know, the fake cat woman. She's training the spoiler, and there's all these, like, rocky sequences and stuff of those two kind of training, and she's teaching her how to throw darts and shit, and all kinds of stuff like that going on. Um, I just wonder, you know, it's getting a little played. I've been saying this forever. Every issue, we got Genevieve Valentine, who's the writer, 
giving us these little bubbles, captions by famous women of power. You know, there's one Elizabeth the First to Parliament. You know, giving these little speeches and stuff. I am woman, hear me roar. And that's cool. I'm down with it. But I'm kind of getting a little tired of, you know, Mario Puzo's Catwoman. You know, I'm ready for it to move on. And it just seems like it's never going to end. And I just want to see the Catwoman, not Ico or Ico. I can't even say her name. Not the bootleg Catwoman hopping across the skyscrapers. You know, you get appearances of Penguin in here. You know, Mr. Cobblepot seems to be a staple in Catwoman. Um, you also have, who's that? Is that, I can't remember, Black Mask, Sedonis, whatever his other name is. Uh, he's been lurking around for like seven issues. So, I mean, I'm just ready for it to move on, all right? Move on, Genevieve. I mean, keep writing. I enjoy your writing, but it's just, it's like I feel like it should be like a book, not a comic book. There's just, like, not enough action. All right. Batman, Superman, Alienation. That's how I read it. More interplay between depowered Superman and Commissioner Gordon and more excellent dialogue and interplay between these two characters. They have trust issues with one another. Uh, as of last issue, Superman did, does not know that... Commissioner Gordon is the new Batman. He knows something's up with regular Batman, but he does not know that it's Commissioner Gordon as Batman. Um, likewise, Commissioner Gordon, if you read the last issue, when he comes upon Clark Kent, you know, he, he thinks that Clark Kent's some crazy guy pretending to be Superman in a t-shirt. And that's like Superman's outfit right now. is like blue jeans with a t-shirt. And... He doesn't really have a lot of respect for him um, until they grapple, get in a little wrestling match, and then he realizes, hey, this is Clark Kent strong as hell. Maybe this is the real Superman because although Superman is depowered, he still has his superhuman strength. Also, you have Ukor. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. He's this Viking-looking character, and he has an army of ghoulies and ghosts that are forming underneath the city of Gotham. Clark Kent, Superman, goes down to see what's up. It's kind of cool. kind of reminds me a bit of uh, Birthright. I apologize. It's really hard for me to get my camera up here. But it really, really reminds me of that. And there is a surprise appearance at the end of this. I'm not going to spoil it. Big time surprise. But I'm going to say it's a DC character that I just started to read and I went all in on the graphic novels. And if you've been watching my show, you can guess who that is. But it'll be interesting to see what happens, how this goes. And I just can't get over freaking... Commissioner Gordon with a mohawk, dude. I cannot, I mean, look at him, man. I just, uh, it's just not right to me, all right? It's just not right, okay? Constantine, the Hellblazer. And again, this week, I have mostly DC books. I guess I'm a DC guy. Constantine heads back over to England. See the Union Jack there? Heads back over to England, goes on an adventure with an M15 agent named Georgiana Snow to investigate a series of murder murders. Good book, but what I'm really noticing is that there's no more Riley Rosmo in this book doing the artwork. You still have Palencia, Ivan Palencia doing the coloring, but it just totally changes the dynamic. If you read Rasputin, You'll understand what I mean. It's a big difference here uh, in the artwork. The Rosamo Palencia pair-up art and color was just tremendous, and I'm really feeling like it's a miss. Um, granted, Vanessa Del Rey is a good artist, and Ming Doyle, who was also writing in this, does some of the artwork. Uh, but it's definitely a miss without Rosamo. And again, it's very dialogue heavy as well. That's the one thing I'm noticing about Constantine is that there's a ton of artwork. 
they kind of tell you everything that's on Constantine's mind. They don't really, you know, leave a lot to your imagination as to what Constantine may be thinking. It's kind of like this Steinbeckian, everything is just spelled out and laid out for you. And, you know, I enjoy that kind of writing, but it's it's to the umph degree in this book, I would say. So, I'm going to stick with it. I'm enjoying it. I enjoyed the last book. You know, Constantine's been getting into some trouble. His ghost friends are getting killed. And uh, hopefully they answer some more of those questions. Okay, Marvel books. And we got Lando. And look at this cover, man. And I got to say, Lando, the artwork of uh, Alex Maleev is just tremendous. The likeness that he brings to the Billy D. Williams Lando Calrissian character is uncanny. I mean, it just looks so much like Billy D. Billy D. Williams. Badass Billy D. Colt 45, Malt Liquor Billy D. If you don't remember, he did used to do Malt Liquor commercials, which was great. Bring back Malt Liquor commercials, please. I remember Ice-T rappelling down for, what was it, the St. Ives Special Reserve? Or was it Old English? I don't remember. But it was gr those were great commercials. Um, he's got his friend with him, Lobot. That's the dude who pioneered Bluetooth technology. Uh, Lando's in a bit of deep shit, okay? Basically what happened was he uh, made a deal with Papa Torin, who's this crime boss. He's in debt to him. Lando thought that that debt uh, was resolved based on a heist that he did, but this guy said to Lando, no, I need more, buddy. So Lando goes ahead, targets this Imperial luxury yacht, okay? Does a hijack, hijacks the ship, it turns out that that freaking ship belongs to none other than Emperor Palpatine. So he's in deep shit, dude. And the Emperor wants his shit back. There's great sequences in here with bounty hunters. That's not Boba Fett, but he is Boba Fett-like. And he's pretty badass. And I just want to say that the writer here, uh, Charles Soule, I think it's Soul or Suli. It's S O U L E. I think he just really captures the voice of Lando Calrissian. That was the one thing that I really noticed in this book when I read it last time. Was like I really felt like I was reading uh, Lando Calrissian from the movies, and I felt that that was a struggling piece in the Princess Leia series by the Dodson twins, whoever they are. Uh, it, it was hard reading Princess Leia because I felt like it wasn't really like the Princess Leia I was used to. But this, it's like, I just feel like he's captured the voice of Lando Calrissian. I'm really enjoying it. All right, we got Spider-Man 20.0. Not number 20, it's Spider-Man 20.0. This is Spiral number 5. This is the conclusion of this story arc. The crime landscape of NYC is changed forever, so they say. Every villain under the sun has been trying to take over New York City. Okay? Now, the only one who's left is Mr. Negative. Uh, to be honest, I haven't been reading this. I'm like three issues behind. I got to like issue number two, part two of this story, and I stopped reading it. It just wasn't very intriguing to me. You know, you have the Wraith who's actually uh, Captain, Police Captain Wantabi. She moonlight, moonlights as a vigilante named Wraith. She's having a lot of problems because I think one of her detectives got killed or something. Something happened like that. And she's tired of the slow pace of police work and all the procedure and the policy that she has to follow. So she moonlights as the Wraith, as this vigilante, so she can just go out and kick ass and take names and find out things that she wants. She butts heads with uh, Spider-Man along the way. Um, great artwork. I mean, check out that spread. Beautiful. Beautiful artwork. Uh, I believe that's Carlo Barberi. Um, yeah, Carlo Barberi. Um, I don't know. I, I hope to get into this maybe this weekend. I might just catch up now that I have the whole thing assembled and just read it all in one shot. 
Um, but it hasn't really captivated my interest. And believe it or not, it's putting The Amazing Spider-Man for me on the keep or sleep list. I'm just uh, not feeling it. After Spider-Verse, it just hasn't captured my interest or my attention. So that's where we stand on that. All right, Descender, number six. This is one of my favorite image comics, The Adventures of Dr. Kwan. He is the man who invented the robots, or so we thought. These robots ended up turning on their human counterparts, and now the world hates robots. Uh, it turns out that Dr. Kwan revealed last issue that he did not create these robots, but that he stole the technology, and he was actually an understudy of Dr. Kwan? I can't say his name. Daquan? I can't quite recall. The artwork in here is great. Dustin Nguyen, beautiful artwork. I guess it's done like paintings, like watercolors. Beautiful looking stuff. Um, it's kind of minimalistic in a way, like a lot of the panels like don't have too much background to them. But I guess the contrast really sticks out. It's kind of cool. It's kind of like over white balance stuff. But we actually find more about the secret origin of this Dr. Kwan. So I can't wait to find that out. I can't wait to see what that is all about. And I guess we'll see how it goes. This is uh, the end of the first story arc. So first six issue story arc. It's going to stop and then it's going to resume again in November. So buy the trade when it comes out. I highly recommend it. Get it from like cheapgraphicnovels.com. If Image does what they usually do, it'll be 10 bucks. But if you order it online, most of those places will have it for like 6 And I'll be the idiot who spent $18 instead of 6 But I digress. Drifter, number seven, Abraham Pollux is on the dark side of Oro, the planet Oro, and he gets to investigate his crashed spaceship. Nick Klein is tremendous. He does all the art and the coloring in this, and I'm a sucker for purple and lavender. And this dark side of the planet, it may be dark, but it is beautiful. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how this turns out. I mean, it's just such a whimsical world. Amazing characters. Stranger in a Strange Land, and it's like a Western dude. It's just a beautiful, beautiful book. I'm really enjoying it. It's another one of my favorite uh, image titles. This is the second story arch, uh, second issue in. And uh, I highly recommend it. I mean, if you're into that kind of story, like Stranger in a Strange Land, Western-type gig, you're going to love it. You are going to love it. It's a little short. It's on the short side. Again, a lot of image comics. That's my big complaint. You know, great writing and stuff, but lots of times you can burn through an issue in like five minutes, and that's the problem. Okay, I got another new title from Image. We have Jeremy Hahn who's doing both the artwork and the penmanship. Beauty. And basically the story behind this, I think I should just read you the summary because I don't know much about it at all. Other than there's this disease called beauty. And believe it or not, if you acquire it, it's like an STD, you acquire it and it ends up making you beautiful. Of all things. Imagine that. Let's see if I have it here. Okay. So let me read this here. Set in a world where an STD that makes people look beautiful has been contracted by half the population. The beauty takes a look at our obsession with appearance through a dark and slightly twisted science fiction filter. Needless to say, fans of the TV show Black Mirror will feel right at home here. Never watched that show. Don't know anything about it. But honestly, I'd recommend this comic book to anyone who likes good science fiction, blah, blah, blah. The story unfolds from the perspective of detectives Foster and Vaughn. At the beginning of the issue, they're called to investigate the sudden death of someone with the beauty who seemed to spontaneously combust inside. 
And it gives this nice little diatribe in the beginning about what it means to have the beauty. Half the population likes it. The other half does not. This woman's on the subway next to a big fat guy like me. She starts coughing up some shit. And yeah, she does spontaneously combust, as you see. Well, who's doing the spontaneous combustion? Is that a side effect or did someone do that to her? So it says, what follows is part police drama, part science fiction with a dash of horror thrown in for good measure. Writers Jeremy Hahn and Jason Hurley push the plot along at a fast pace while still taking time to properly introduce the main cast of characters. So I guess it's a cool social commentary on beauty, our obsession with beauty, our, you know, which is obviously fueled by social media and Twitter and all that stuff. Everybody's always posting things on Facebook. We're always posting things of ourselves in our best light. Even I'm trying to get my best angle on the camera. You know what I mean? I'm still looking pretty gnarly. But I'm really looking forward to see where this goes. It's kind of intriguing. There's Miss Beauty there. Post-aftermath combustion. Looks all sorts of fucked up. So I'm really, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, I can't wait. So I'll keep you guys posted and let you know how this goes. So beauty. Image Comics. Check it, check it out. Alright. Dark Horse. We got Abe Sapien. Another frog issue. Uh, Abe Sapien digs deeper into his past and uh, tries to find out more of his origin and more of his relation to the frogs. He's always had a strong relation to the frogs. I think he's basically like an evolved frog. And he digs deeper and deeper. This is down in Florida in the swamp. Again, you have Dave Stewart. I always got to mention Dave Stewart for the coloring. Um, Scott Alley's doing the writing and Sebastian Fumara. Is doing the artwork, and uh, it's beautiful, beautiful work. Some of the animals. There's Abe, taking a good look. And Abe Sapien, like I said, he's one of my favorite characters in the Hellboy universe. Quietly strong, got that steel resolve. And uh, we're all trying to find out who we are, aren't we? Every day in our lives, we try to learn more and more about ourselves. And that's why I always have such a connection with the Mignolaverse, especially Abe Sapien, where monsters are more human than anybody I know on this planet. Except my girlfriend. How you doing, Sarah? All right. Harrow County. Colin Bunn's horror story. That's the skinless boy wonder who is creepy, who has been stalking our main character, who I can't remember her name because, if you know, that's my trademark. I can never remember the names of any of the characters in any of the books that I read. But we learn more about the powers that this girl starts to have. Emmy. Her name is Emmy. Um, her mother was a witch, or so we believe. She was born of this witch. Uh, there's another beast stalking her in this issue. It's like a bull-type minotaur creature. Uh, if you like horror, you'll love this book. I mean, it is just creepy. The things that happen in here and the atmosphere. She's trapped in the woods. She finally gets out. And who helps her? This old, creepy pharmacist guy i mean he just uh yeah i don't know man getting in the truck with an old guy like that i mean you just freaking never know but we'll have to wait and see so i highly recommend this book it's better than witches there's the skinless boy wonder looks like he may be helping emmy out I don't know. I probably just spoiled everything there. But that's going to do it, folks. Sorry I didn't have as much time to prepare for this episode. But, uh, you know, burning the midnight oil and doing overtime at work will do that. So hopefully in the next few weeks I'll be able to get back to doing some higher quality uh, camera work and be able to be more prepared with my issues. 
But rock on. Let me know what issues you got, guys. I always love to hear what books you're reading and what you're enjoying, what you're liking, what you're disliking. Hey, how about we do a cover of the week since I got so many comics this week. Uh, let's see here. We got some good ones. Some really good ones. Let me see. I'm looking through. I'm going to say, ooh, I don't know. I'm really liking that Harrell County one. That Harrell County one's looking good. Lando's looking good. But as much as I'm having difficulty reading this, I got to go with the Catwoman cover. I'm just liking that midlife crisis Batman creeping up on her, ready to grab her, ready to squeeze something, something. Peace. Have a good week, guys.